show you this enemy. While Martin Luther King was sitting in the Oval Office with Lyndon Baines Johnson signing or watching him sign the legislation in another part of the government, they were planning his assassination. <laughs> Martin Luther King was more than I have a dream. Martin Luther King was evolving into a great thinker and leader that we were robbed of. They hated him, but now they can give you thoroughfares. See, they kill your man, then call him, uh, this is John, uh, I mean, this is Martin Luther King Boulevard. That's very nice. But you would be better with the white man's name on it if you had Martin Luther King's brilliant evolutionary thinking. Now watch this, watch now, watch, watch, watch. Martin Luther King, according to what Harry Belafonte told me, near the end of his time among us, may God be pleased with him, and I'm sure he is, Martin was with his inner circle and they were very joyous but Dr. King was very sad. And Harry Belafonte went over to him and said, I, he said, Martin, why are you so melancholy? And according to Harry Belafonte, Dr. King said, I fear that I'm integrating my people into a burning house. Now wait, wait, wait. He was hoping that maybe we could put the fire out. You could if it were not started by God. But if the house that is on fire, the fire was ignited by God, then there's nothing any of us can do to put that fire out. Now, it's not a literal fire, but here's the way the fire starts. After 400 years, I will come. What will you do when you come? I'm going to raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto Moses. And I'm going to put my words in his mouth and he will speak unto them all that I shall command him. I want you to listen to me. See? Look at Jesus. When you read the Gospels, see, you're reading Jesus giving parables. That's the Jesus of yesterday. But the Jesus that is the actual Messiah, when they asked him, he said, whatsoever the Father bids me to say, that I say. And whatever the Father bids me to do, that I do. If you look in the Quran, the prophet of the Quran is given words to say. And when they say that, you say. See, it's Muhammad that fulfills. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 I, I, I ain't got there yet. <laughs> Muhammad of 1400 years ago was also a sign of the man like Moses. 
the Muhammad that comes at the end of the world. Muhammad is Jesus and Jesus is Muhammad. Now I'm going to prove it. Now you don't have to study. You don't have to study. Jesus of 2,000 years ago was hated by the Jews of that day. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, your Jesus is hated by them too. Listen, just listen. Just listen. Moses had an impediment of speech. So he was coming before God in a state of weakness, asking God, well, I can't go before Pharaoh because I got a problem with speech. Could you give me my brother Aaron? God said, okay, but who made your mouth? Don't worry about how you speak. I made your mouth, but I'm giving you Aaron, but I'm giving it to him to you for another purpose, not out of your weakness, thinking you need him, but out of my love for you and the people, I'm giving you a person that you will be to him as a God. And he will be to you as your prophet to the people. Now look, you either going to fulfill it or the Bible and the Quran don't mean nothing. It's not a book for yesterday. It's a book that's being fulfilled right in front of your face. All right, here we go. Here we go. The Quran in the 20th surah says it a little different. Moses is praying for a helper. And he says, oh, Allah, grant me a helper and Ada from my family that and remove the knot from my tongue that they may understand my words and expand for me my breast. See? If you notice Jesus in the beginning, it was a very narrow assignment. Go ye not in the way of the Samaritans, but go ye to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is why I'm in trouble today. Because the house of Israel is what you live living in. It represents the entire white race. And you are their children. The children of Israel. Now let's prove it. Whose name do you wear? Is it your father's name or white folks' name? Johnson, Jones, Smith, Brown, Green, Crow, Buzzard, Flea, Fly. See, the white man was named after the creatures of God. You are from God and should wear the names of God. But you got your slave master's name. Who made you a Christian? No, no, no. Let's look at it. For 300 years, the Bible was locked against black people. 
And any one of us that was taught to read would be beaten or killed. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I meant to wake up your parents. I'm almost where I want to go. Just be patient with me a few more minutes. <laughs> Dear family, listen. We are like their children. And they treat us like that. You have to beg them for everything you want like a child asking his parent. Massa, you got a job for me, Massa? Massa, will you let me in your neighborhood, Massa? Will you let me in your school, Massa? See, you're like little children, and they treat you like that. Well, wait a minute. The president ain't like no little child. Stop it. I'm going to show you what they think about you. Here's the president of the United States. He makes a statement about people losing their homes and whatnot, gambling. And then his flight, his plane stops in Las Vegas. And the little Jewish mayor wouldn't even come out to greet him. How you gonna greet a nigga president? Yes, I use the word because that's the way they think. You're nothing to them. Nothing to them. Don King, the great boxing impresario, sat at my table, said he met with the executives of Time Warner, and they told him, you are a flea, and we are an elephant, and we will crush you. You see many fights now that Don is producing? Look at your giants. Let me talk to you, man. You're going to be the future leaders, but you can't be no punk and lead our people. You got to be a real man or get the hell out the way. Go along to get along, Negro. Afraid to speak up. Afraid to stand up for people that are dying in the street because their leaders are liars and thieves and robbers. That's why Jesus said, All that came before me were thieves and robbers. Suck the life out of you and give you nothing in return. Yeah, I'm talking about it. Our poor people are suffering because our leaders, our children, who just want a place close to their former slave masters and their children. I, I'm the first black to, to be over Merrill Lynch. I'm the first black to be over this. I'm the first. Why don't you be the first black to walk into a free independent nation under the guidance of God? Why don't you think?
about building a real nation for yourself and your people. Now I can conclude. Some of you so happy that I'm concluding. But let me tell you, that's why they don't want me in your college. Because you're going to have to think differently now. The brother said we got to change. But change into what? Look. Pharaoh was rich. And the children of Israel were enamored by the wealth of Pharaoh. So Moses prayed that God would destroy the wealth of Pharaoh so that his people wouldn't look to Pharaoh but look to God Moses, Aaron, and themselves. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Now our brother becomes president. After George Bush killed tens of thousands of Iraqis, shock and awe, on the basis of a lie. You're talking about killing your own people? Sending our soldiers, young, black, brown, and white, to die in Iraq on the basis of a lie. Well, Osama bin Laden was in Afghanistan. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And after 9-11, George W. Bush, a few days after it happened, it was these Muslims that did it. Have you really studied what happened? Do you think these little people that learn how to fly a little bit could fly a plane and drop it so many feet at 500 miles an hour and drive it into the World Trade Center? that it was organized by a man in some cave over there. You a damn fool. And you allowed this enemy to deceive you while this was to their political advantage. Well, I'm speaking like this because I may never get back. The forces are very angry with me, and I understand it. He brings around him all the Wall Street crowd from Goldman Sachs. See, you socializing, you boogie, you party, and I know you. You focus a little on your studies, but a lot on the girl you study it. and the open knee rather than the open book. <laughs> Reefer smoking and acting a fool. We know you. That's why your brothers and sisters say, we gotta change. This is a serious world out there that you're gonna face. In leaving you, let me tell you what you're gonna face. These Wall Street helpers of Obama asked him to take out a stimulus package. Well, he's not an economist. He trusted them. Nearly a trillion dollars he borrows. Did you get anything? Did small businesses get any loans from the banks? Did the people whose houses are in foreclosure get any help? Did the infrastructure get rebuilt? Oh, 
What happened to George Bush's stimulus package of nearly 800 billion? You don't even know where that went. Nobody saying nothing, nobody asking. But all of a sudden, our brother is the guilty party for putting America in debt. See, if you don't study, you cannot defend him. If you don't study, you can't help him. America went into debt starting in 1913. She was only a billion dollars in debt in 1913, and in less than a hundred years, she's 56 trillion dollars in debt. How did that happen? Did Brother Barack do that? In 1913, some bankers, Jewish and Gentile, met on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. And they developed what would later become the Federal Reserve Act, which was passed in Congress December the 26th, 1913. And after that, a group of bankers began to control the monetary uh, service of this nation. Oh, they're right around the corner and where they print the money and right next door is the Holocaust Museum. <laughs> Some of you silly ones wonder why. You say, Farrakhan, why are you doing this? You're making it hard for all of us. No. No, if you don't know Satan, you can't get free from him. Did I, did I say something? See, the book of Thessalonians puts it nice. That day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed not the spirit of sin the man of sin sin is transgression of the law and these they're not really Jews no 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 they've hijacked Judaism those that I'm talking about this is the synagogue of Satan that you will read about in Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. Go ahead and study. They print your money. Used to be a time when we could go to the bank and pull out a $50 bill. I happen to have one. Mr. Grant's face is on it. But it says Federal Reserve Note. But when I was a young boy, it used to be called a silver certificate. That you could take it to the bank, this is paper, and get in return real money. Silver. Take it to the bank now. See, the, you're being tricked every day. Bring your dollars or your old gold. And we will give you paper. Soon you'll be wiping your backside with paper because real money don't exist. America is broke. She's broke. Now the tea party got in. I'm happy. Because the tea party is not a part of the old crowd. The tea party is forcing these Republicans to be strict fiscal conservatives. Plus, they're not under the control of the Zionists. So once they get in and see See, revolution is inside the house. 
Now you will not have a job. Your latest figures are 15.5% unemployment. Yours is not going down. Yours is going up. So when you come out of here, if you think that your study of psychology will get you a job, they're even laying off engineers and architects. But you have to be engineers, architects, scientists, because you're being called upon to build with Christ a new world. And you are the stone that the builders have rejected. But it's now God calling you to become the headstone of the corner. And the scripture said, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Now, dear brothers and sisters, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I wouldn't waste time trying to get you to hate people. Hate is, hate is silly. But it's useful. You know, God don't love everybody. He killed a lot of people. You agree? Why did I say hate is useful? Because when we learn the secret of the identity of our oppressor, we were filled with anger and hate. What? These people tricked us like that? When the hate built up in us, Elijah Muhammad directed it. Look at that reefer you're smoking. Look at what he made you. Look at that alcohol. Look at you being a pimp. Look at you gambling. Look at you hustling. Look at the way you're acting. Hate got in. And overnight, we cast off heroin. I've seen this with my eyes. A brother come to the mosque, hear the teaching, and that night, he kicked heroin cold turkey. Look, you can do anything you want to do if you have a strong enough will to do it. We've got to kick the bad habits and get into the habit of learning. Now, see, they call me anti-Semitic. Isn't that something? I've never harmed one Jewish person in my life. And I don't advocate nothing like that. But I can tell you what anti-black is. Now, because they kept calling me anti-Semitic, the scholars in the nation of Islam got together did the research and came up with two books Secret Relationship Part 1 Secret Relationship Part 2 and what was it about? It was about defending me from the false charge of anti-Semitism in this book, you find all the people that they call anti-Semites. W.E.B. Du Bois was one. Marcus Garvey was one. Malcolm was one. Martin. Oh, yeah, they call Martin that. They call Mandela that. They call Bishop Tutu that. 
Yes, 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 yes. Anybody that criticizes them is all of a sudden a hater. See, the truth is, when you can't stand criticism, something wrong there. When any criticism, look at Helen Thomas. You know the old lady that was the head of the White House press corps? And somebody asked her uh, about Israel, and she said, well, the Jews need to leave Palestine and go back to Europe, to Germany, to Poland, to all those countries where they come from. The next day, she was gone. So much for freedom of speech. And if you remember Rick Sanchez, CNN, all he said was, Jews control the media. I mean, the poor man couldn't even get back to the station. He was through. You can't tell the truth on them because the truth illuminates that they have taken your country. How could a, a, a population so small have so much power and influence? Three Jews on the Supreme Court. Ain't but nine. How, how all this happen? And here you are. Got your little positions. And if you're not careful, you lose them. You're fighting for tenure and all those kind of things. But if you talk too bold, tenure is out the window. So I'm making this book, these books available only to the student leaders that are here for free. Brother Brandon, <coughs> Brother Jalil, they know all the student leaders. You get this free. And my lecture today on DVD to all the student leaders, free. It's really not free. I'm paying for it. And by the way, you know, the minister paid his way here. The minister didn't ask for no honorarium. My honorarium was seeing you and talking to you. Can I please, before you go, Please don't go. Wait till I finish. Please. You know, Libya is big in the, in the news today. And I just wanted to say how our poor brother is being set up. You know, it's terrible when you know Satan and you know your people don't. And they hate you for exposing them. I'm exposing them at the cost of my life. But I don't care to live if you can't be free. Listen to me good. My life is for the truth. And I know it's only the truth that will set you free.